Thanks for tuning in to more fantasy football talk on the Arlads Football Network as we talk dynasty fantasy football. And that means John McKechnie from rotowire.com joins me once again. How's it going, John? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for, thanks for having me back on. And uh, whew, especially after the, the humbling uh, performance this week uh, that my squad had against your team, uh, you got all the bragging rights on, on your side of the table for this week. I like that. Okay, not bad. Let's see, where is the – I should actually look for the score here. Where, where's, 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 the, where's the score we got? I'm going to have to look for the score here uh, to kind of boast a little bit more. But you, you just play, are you just playing this up right now? It was, it was 227 to 143, good sir. Oh, I, I didn't even know what the actual – there it is, right on the screen. Oh, I just had no idea that I totally rocked you. Okay. <laughs> there it is. See, everybody? There it goes. Uh, but that's just the number there. And if you go, oh, I'm going to go into it in more detail. Why don't I? Oh, you had Lamar Jackson, too. That was a wasted effort. It's <laughs> rubbing it in, man. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Oh, Mostert. Wait, Mostert? Yeah. I, I forgot to pull him. Forgot oh, to pull so him. That's what me. happens when you have 45 fantasy leagues. It it's a bit it's a bit much to uh, to keep track of. I gotta get a spreadsheet going with some with some lineup alerts. And you got the Julio Jones, uh, AJ Brown combo happening, and uh, yeah, okay, well, you know, what are you gonna do? It happens. I didn't have that great of a week. Week one, I was at the bottom of the league almost in week one. So that's what happens. It's it's a long season, mm -hmm. and it's really not about matchups. That's the thing I think a lot of people sometimes don't you know get. It's about the long even in dynasty it's about the longevity of the season and and you try not to get too carried away with matchups and especially if your points are going pretty well I, I think it's important to go okay where am i in the point structure combined to where my record is early yeah absolutely so you know that you know good going down o oh two uh never feels great but uh you know as long as your your points are uh you know, in the middle of the pack and you're not completely playing yourself out of it, then, uh, you know, you, you could, you still got season, plenty of season ahead to, you know, make your choice as far as, uh, you know, are you going to be a buyer or a seller? Yeah. Long way to go before that happens. But, uh, the other guy that's sitting here waiting to talk this is our first guest. We, we said at the beginning of the season that we were going to get on uh, our team owners and here's one of them, Ryan Talbot. He covers the Buffalo bills for, uh, NY upstate. Uh, is it nyupstate.com? Uh, nyup.com. Nyup.com. Okay. Com. Yeah. Either way, you just type it in Ryan Talbot Bills. And uh, Ryan has been covering the Bills now for how long? Uh, at least going on a decade now. I've been with uh, NY Up for about five years now, though. Okay. And so Ryan and I, I'm sure we'll talk more Buffalo Bills football in the next few weeks. I got a big matchup with the Chiefs. Maybe that'll be a good week to have him on. We haven't spoken to him since the season began. So, but what about your team here, Ryan? Uh, in general, the first couple of weeks, how did you feel? First of all, as far as your draft was concerned, absolutely hated it. If I'm being quite honest, I had the last pick of the first round and, and mind you, it's a two quarterback league. So I figured, okay, there's going to be a little run on quarterbacks. I want to say like, what was it? Eight of the picks or seven of the picks in oh, front yeah. of me were all QBs. So, you know, right then and there, my, my strategy went out the window and, Generally in dynasty leagues, I hate taking running backs in the first rounds just because their careers are so short. Yes, you can get some great players. Um, but I remember a few years ago when Saquon Barkley was a can't miss. And, and you know, I'm not trying to bash Barkley or anything like that. I have him on a few leagues. Uh, he hasn't really done much this year. There, there's certain guys that you know are going to perform, but they're getting up there in age. So I'm just like, oh, you don't want to go wide receiver. You don't want to go running back necessarily. So I had to go quarterback. And I and listen, it's a dynasty league. So I said, OK, if this is dynasty. Hey. I'm thinking not just 2021. I'm thinking down the road. So my first two picks were Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow. It. So there's going to be some growing yes. pains this year. As I saw, you know, week one, they out, everyone outperformed uh, on my roster for the most part. This week, it looked more like the team I was kind of expecting based on the youth that I have across the board, not just at quarterback. So really, really ugly week this week. But, you, you know, you'll have that. I'm going to try to put up the most competitive roster week in, week out. But. 
with a lot of youth, it's going to happen sometimes. Yeah. What do you think about that, Ryan? Because I'm uh, John, because I'm taking a look as uh, as we're talking to Ryan at his team. And I mean, that's the first thing that sticks out to me is he's got Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow. Yeah, I mean that that's that's going to be a great core that that you know eventually is going to start to to pay dividends. I think hopefully sooner rather than later it, it feels like Trevor Lawrence is not really being put in a great position to succeed right now. It's going to be a little bit wonky coming out. I mean 14 for 33 this past week that's obviously not what you're looking for uh from him. So I think in time, I, I still have no doubts about about Lawrence as a dynasty asset. Um, you know, he he's a rock star, just really one of the most talented guys uh, to come into the league in, in quite some time. So just a matter of him overcoming the Jags at, at this point. And, you know, maybe the Urban Meyer experiment won't last too much longer. Uh, we'll see. Um, but either way, you know, keep the faith on that one. And then, you know, you, you've just kind of run into some tough luck as far as James Robinson and uh, CEH have gone, you know, a couple of year two guys who a lot of people I thought smartly in, invested in. I have a lot of shares of both of these guys and off to slow ish starts. Robinson a little bit more encouraging that this past week than that week one game against Houston. But yeah, CEH, for whatever reason, you know, he had the killer fumble, of course, but just was kind of nondescript the rest of the night uh, on Sunday, which was kind of, you know, a shootout. So, you know, as the Chiefs get into more games where they're they're playing with the lead, we start to see uh, CEH's production, I think, tick back up. Uh, Ryan, I'm noticing here you made a really good call by not starting uh, Gordon because he had a really good first week. Uh, but you held him back and you have both Denver running backs. Uh, Ruggs actually had a big play, too. I'll bring that up. You could mm -hmm. answer as many of these as you want. But Ruggs is a guy that's like, you know, it, to me, he feels like a guy that one week could have that big play and then maybe he'll be quiet the next week. And then the next week, you know, so it's like, I don't know how consistent Ruggs, it, until he shows more consistency, uh, I don't... I don't know how much of a starter he can be, but if he can show some more consistency, he he, he could turn out to be a really good player, and he's still very young. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he's one of those boomer bust guys. When you have that kind of speed, when you have someone that can make those big plays, it's always enticing or tempting to put them in the lineup. But you just never know on a week to week basis, especially when when you look at what Las Vegas does. Derek Carr is pretty much locked in on Darren Waller. Uh, first and foremost, he, he's like the first, second, third target in terms of when he's looking around the field. He's waiting and waiting and waiting to see if he gets <laughs> yeah. open, even if that after that first read, he's not. So I get it. Uh, I'm actually a big Brian Edwards guy, too, and I tried to get him in a few leagues. But I think you need some patience there as that offense grows a little bit. I do like Carr as a passer in, in fantasy-wise, so I do think there's some upside there with Ruggs. Uh, the Denver running backs... I'm actually higher on Williams, but I wanted to get his handcuffed just because I think early on this year, you're going to see a lot of Melvin Gordon. He's also a guy that I've had in leagues, and it feels like whenever I put him in my lineup, he does nothing. And when he's on the bench, he does some pretty good things. So it's just one of those. I, I am always hesitant. And then usually when I do, it's, it's the, the bad week. So, you, you know, you look at that bench, though. I also have Marshall in Carolina, someone that had a huge preseason, uh, someone that I'm very high on there. Um, Philip Lindsay, who's actually been okay at times in Houston. Houston's looked a lot better than I expected, uh, through, you know, a game and a half, obviously when Tyrod went out, they, they looked a lot different offensively. You know, Daniel Jones and, and is even, not a bad young backup quarterback too. If he, no. if he could start playing, but, and I got to tell you after what we saw on, 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 uh, the Thursday night. And I said this last week, last year about Daniel Jones, he must run the football. Yes, he's vulnerable to getting hit and hurt, but I'm sorry. Daniel Jones is not going to be an effective quarterback in the NFL unless you allow him to run the football. And I'm glad they allowed him to do it because he had a, he had a really good game on Thursday night. Yes, he did. And listen, I mean, he had one touchdown taken off the board on a really questionable holding call that, that he took down. I mean, it's still a long gain for yeah. him. Uh, but you can be smart with quarterbacks like Daniel Jones and do design quarterback runs where he doesn't have to take the hits. 
not every design run has to be like Josh Allen, where he takes a lot of hits that I think are unnecessary, especially when you're running him up the gut. You saw this week in week two, Josh Allen do a lot of runs to the outside where he could get out of bounds. He could slide and not take that punishment. You can do that with Daniel Jones, and he has that sneaky speed and athleticism. And if you can get defenses worried about that, it'll help open up things in the passing game for him as well. It'll help Saquon Barkley uh, in, in the run game too. So it, it really would pay dividends if they would got a little bit more creative with him and uh, took the training wheels off, so to speak. What do you think about his roster, John? What sticks out? You no, know, I think, uh, I think you got, you know, you got some players there. Um, you know, I like the receiving core. I love Keenan Allen and, and, you know, having the Jamar chase, Joe Burrow pairing, I think is a, is a really nice setup there. Um, so I love that. I think that it was a smart play, especially with this being a, a year one of a dynasty, uh, just kind of, buying the entire uh, Denver backfield and, and, you know, just kind of letting it sort itself out, like you're saying, with, between Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. It, you know, I think we, we could bro- both maybe expect Javante starts to get a little bit more involved as the season goes on. He gets a little bit more uh, acclimated to the NFL, um, you know, and, you know, if you're in the trying to win on a given week, maybe you can you have the luxury of sitting a guy like Trevor Lawrence until he starts to break out because you do have someone in a Daniel Jones that you can plug in there. And of course that there's the there's the low floor that he brings with the fumble problems. But uh, when he gets going as a runner and you, you see what he has with those pass catchers, I mean Kenny Galladay is impressive. Sterling Shepard seems to have found new life a little bit this year. Um, I, I think Darius Slayton's a pretty talented player as well. We we haven't even really seen Kadarius Tony yet. So um, I think there's enough there to you, you have like that nice quarterback depth where you have the luxury of of kind of mixing and matching on, on a given week. And then also I it, noticed uh, you have the two tight ends that you started this past week. Uh, Ryan, uh, give me your input on that. Well, you know, that was just more so uh, did I put them? Yeah, I think I did play them both this week. I, I just made some changes before the show started because I had to put two guys on the IR oh, okay. with Tyrod Taylor and uh, Jarvis Landry. But I think I did play them both this week. Yeah, you know, Dallas Goddard, we, we did our draft pretty early. I, when was our draft? Well, um, middle of the summer, pretty much. Is yeah, that I think about like, a, like third week of August or something? So preseason definitely still going on then. So at that point, you know, there were still some rumors about Zach Ertz and he's not going to be on this Eagles roster. Um, And when there was that run on the initial wave of tight ends, I said, "Okay, I'm going to sit tight. Got it was like the end of my uh, maybe tier one, I would say probably high tier two instead. And I said, I want to get this guy, especially if Ertz gets traded while Ertz isn't traded. He wants to retire now as an Eagle. So that kind of threw that whole strategy off. Uh, Logan Thomas, I, I play just because I do think that he is a big play uh, like threat him. at tight yeah. end. I, I liked him, and I think that he is still a, a very good threat with, with uh, Taylor Heineke. Heineke targeted him a few times. There was one drop early in that game. It looked like the football was kind of wet on the play. It was not ideal conditions, but I really liked the idea of him having Ryan Fitzpatrick before this season started because – you go back and you look at Fitz, especially last year when he was in Miami. His his favorite target was uh, Mike Gusecki. So he was always targeting that middle of the field. He was doing a nice job there, especially in games against the Bills. There was one where Gusecki went for like one, I want to say 140, 150 range. Um, so I thought there that would be a good pairing. And obviously injuries happen. I still think he's going to be valuable there too. And he was another one of my high tight end two tight players in this draft. So you know, injuries happen, matchups happen. I, I just kind of like that matchup going into this week, but it didn't really pay and off. And they're both very young. So, you know, they're not uh, one or two years into the league, but they're, they're still very much into their prime. They got a long way to go, and uh, you've got two good ones. Uh, let's take a look at what's available now uh, as far as, you know, what's trending. And you mentioned Taylor Heineke. And, uh, you know, I, I even made it known in our league, you know, I, I try I put a waiver on Heineke, and we talked about this last week, John, that I was already interested in potentially Heineke as a good young quarterback to keep an eye on. I'm not looking at him as, hey, I think Taylor Heineke is going to be, you know, star future guy, but he's intriguing. You know, we talked about his FCS, you know, uh, abilities. Uh, he can run. He's shown that when he plays. That's That's a bonus. Uh, and he's got a little bit of a swag to him. You know, he plays in these big primetime games and he plays pretty well. So I think, that, you know, and he hasn't even started, what, a half a, a half a dozen games in his career. So I think there's some potential there. 
Yeah, I mean, he, he's someone that, that you know, the way that he played in, the, in that postseason game against Tampa, like, I can't completely blame Washington for going out and bringing in a veteran, but I felt like after that game, he kind of deserved a shot to, to get the starting job yeah. in Washington. So, um, yeah, he's he's an interesting guy. He plays a lot of moxie, you know, maybe not the physical toolsiest guy that, you, that you're going to find out there, but... He seems to just get the team going. I mean, you saw Chase Young after the game on Thursday just saying that's our guy. So it seems like he has the locker room one, which is, you know, uh, hard to do, especially when you when you don't have a, a great pedigree. And, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick comes in and he's obviously a locker room guy. But it seems like the guys believe in Heineke and, you know, he's out there. If if all he has to do is just kind of make the read to either Thomas or Terry McLaurin, you can kind of patch it together, make it work that way. And then, you know, like you, like you alluded to get, uh, get his athleticism going a little bit as a rusher as well. Yeah, And then of course, Deami Brown is young. I have him on my, on our, on my, on the team in this league. Uh, you know, there Patterson's an up and coming running back McKissick. Uh, they used him well on a matchup, uh, late in the game. Uh, he's got that ability. So there's some, uh, there's some possibilities with that offense and everybody's young. Uh, so that's a good thing, uh, when, especially when Heineke's out there. When you take a look at what's available, Ryan, a uh, couple of the players that, uh, you know, and, and you know, tell me which ones are piquing your interest because um, the ones that are available in our league, you have Cordero Patterson, mm -hmm. and it's intriguing that he's got that running back wide receiver distinction. So isn't that an added bonus that you can play him in either spot? Is that how it goes, by the way, John, before I get to you, Ryan? Yep, yep. If he's listed at both, then he'd be eligible. Yeah, both. so that's that's a that's an extra bonus. Um, then KJ Osborne. I mean, this is now two games in a row, uh, and it's, he didn't have a great college career, so uh, th he's intriguing. Cephas, I think, is showing me that he's not just a guy. He was a very skilled player at Wisconsin, but that's Wisconsin, and it's throw the ball a lot. So I, I'm starting to like what I see about him in the NFL. What about you, uh, Ryan? What do you who who do you think that might be some good potential pickups uh, this week uh, on the waiver wire? Well, you mentioned one of them. When we we're talking about the Giants. I think Sterling Shepard is a guy that is going to be a contributor week in week out. He's high up there on the available available list. Um, Zach Pascal, I think you know hit and miss he's he's another one of those guys that could be boomer bust in that indie offense and and now with Carson Wentz's injury uh probably not someone I would target now but he had a nice week one you mentioned Patterson it's always nice to have players like that that you you have some flexibility with it wasn't that long ago that certain leagues uh Taysom Hill you could you could yeah. move around in a few different spots and and people were really benefiting from it and I'm not saying that Patterson's in that same uh, breath because of the way that he's used and utilized he's not going to put up that kind those kind of points a, in a certain spot necessarily but roster flexibility and versatility definitely plays a part in that so those are some names that you already mentioned um you, you know I, I have to look at the running back I was only looking at wide receiver there but yeah well oh uh, yeah it gets kind of thin quick running you, back you know Carlos Hyde has had options yeah, yeah he's had some opportunities at times uh, when when he's been in, in the lineup in Jacksonville, uh, Peyton Barber, um, you know, Gruden really probably he hyped him up recently, but not someone that I'm necessarily keeping an eye on. So that thins out. I think realistically, there's some quarterbacks out there and there's some wide receivers out there on the waiver wire that you could do well with. Uh, did you notice anybody else out there, uh, John, uh, that we haven't talked about? This is this one's a tricky one because it was so out of the blue. Um, but Max Williams, I mean, he definitely caught my eye, especially when you have a, a position like tight end that can be so top heavy and it's so, so hard to just kind of find someone with a pulse, um, for, for him to do what he did on, on Sunday, I thought was pretty impressive. The seven grabs for 94 and he played 55 snaps the first week, played 44 this past week. So clearly he's, he's on the field. You're kind of putting yourself at the mercy of, you know, betting that he's going to get targeted nearly as much or on a given play targeted instead of a guy like DeAndre Hopkins or Rondale Moore. But it seems like he, he might at least be a, a bit of a factor. So he's more of like a speculative ad and he's had a lot of bad injuries in, in his career. So maybe the dynasty ceiling isn't really all that there for him. But if you're looking to just piece it together at tight end, I think that he's worth a flyer. 
All right, Ryan, uh, before we let you go, have you even considered any, any, any potential trades yet? You know, I really haven't sat down and looked at other teams to see how we match up or see what's out there. Uh, definitely something I'll start doing. Probably, I, I like to wait until the first quarter of the season's over, see where my team is, get an idea of uh, if I'm a buyer or a seller. Like I said, I, I anticipate being someone that that's probably not at the top of the league this year because I went with so much youth. But that also doesn't mean that I want to sell the farm and get rid of these guys because my long-term thinking is 2022-2023. But if the right deal comes along, uh, I'll definitely consider it. It's just tough now that once you've established these rosters, draft picks aren't necessarily as valuable anymore because in, in rookie drafts, there might be a few free agents here and there that uh, were really good at the end of the year that are available. But for the most part, those premier rookies go very quickly in these rookie drafts, and then you're kind of sitting there hoping that you hit on someone else. All right, again, thanks a lot, Ryan. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you again sometime soon. No problem. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ryan. Cheers. John, appreciate it. We'll talk to you again next week.